Alrighty, welcome to Oxygen Not Included and the second video on the topic of space scanners. Here I want to show you a better, more improved version of the space scanner that I showed you in my previous video, which is way more compact in regards to the automation. First, I would like to go over something that I showed in my previous video, but I didn't explicitly mention. And this is the fact that the space scanner is connected to the end gate of the kill switch. The space scanner is the one that gives the control signal to the bunker door when it's supposed to open and when it's supposed to close. But the kill switch is there so that I can override the signal given by the space scanner and I could keep the door closed when the space scanner says the door should be open. This could be in the context of when I do not have enough power and when it takes way longer for the bunker doors to open or close efficiently. With that said, let me show you the newer version of the space scanners. As you can see here, I have exactly the same logic. I do have the kill switch that you can see down there, exactly as the previous one, but with the difference that this time in the new space scanner, I am using automation ribbons instead of actual automation wires. The automation wires made the whole thing messy and it didn't look aesthetically nice, so I decided to make it way more compact and I decided to make use of the automation ribbons. So let's go over the automation logic by using the space scanner signal first. We have the output of the space scanner which is going to go inside this ribbon writer and we do need to use this signal down here so that the kill switch works properly. So in order to make it work I do need to set everything up and I do need to set up the ribbon writers and readers. So let's begin with this. First thing is the space scatter signal. It is outputting a green signal when there are objects incoming and a red signal when there are none. We do need to write this signal on this left ribbon and read it down here where the whole kill switch logic is. So let's begin with bit number one. I'm going to write this on bit number one on this ribbon and I'm going to just read it from bit number one, just leave it like that. A second signal that we do need here is the output of the signal selector, which is written over here again on the left ribbon. I'm going to write this on bit number two and I need to read the same signal over here so that I can control the doors. A third ribbon writer that you can see is over here, just above the space scanner output. And this is the signal that tells when to open the doors and when to close them. This, naturally, I would like to write on bit number three. And I do need to read this signal over here, where the input of the signal selector is. So I'm going to read it at number three. On top here, we can see the ribbon reader for the status of the bunker door. So this cable here, this is the same signal that you can see on the older version over here. So this has to be connected to the output of the end gate down there. So I'm gonna read the signal from bit number four and I'm going to write it over here on bit number four. And that's the left ribbon, it is ready, it is set up. Now we do need to take care of the right ribbon. It is going to carry the following information. First, I want to have the status of the bunker door written on this ribbon so that I can output it here. I'm gonna make it consistent with the previous ribbon, so I'm going to write it on bit number four and I'm going to read it from bit number four. This is the signal that I can use for other bunker doors in my base that I can control with the exact same logic. For instance, this can be the signal for the bunker doors that protect your telescope. Next, I will continue with the signal that comes from the time sensor. As you can see in the previous version, this is connected to the input of the signal counter. So we're going to go back to the updated version and we're going to see that the timer sensor is connected to this ribbon writer and we're going to write it on bit number two. So we're going to follow along and see that here is the input of the signal counter that we're going to read from bit number two. Then we need to continue with the output of the signal counter, which goes inside the buffer gate, which remember has to have a value which is greater than the time it takes for this signal counter to reach its 
set value. And it is going to go inside the control A port of the signal selector. So let's do this. This is exactly the output of the signal counter. It goes inside the buffer gate, the not gate, and it's written here on the right ribbon. I'm going to write it on bit number three. And of course, then I'm going to go here and see that I will read it again from bit number three and feed it to control A port of the signal selector. And then lastly, the final signal is the opposite signal of the status of those doors that eat up regolith that I'm going to write on the right ribbon again in bit number one. And I'm going to read it down here from bit number one. As you can see, we have then two outputs. First output, as mentioned previously, is the status of the bunker doors that you can use to control other bunker doors. And output number two is going to carry the opposite automation signal of the doors that are underneath the space scanner, which can be used in a different way to protect your base from falling asteroids and all the infrastructure that you're going to need surrounding it. Okay, so this sums up the space scanner logic here. Now, one thing that we need not to forget is that we need to set up also the buffer gates and the timer sensor itself, also the signal counter. Signal counter, again, as mentioned in the previous video, you can have a value between 3 or 5. I'm gonna go with 3 here. I have set up the timer sensor with the values 3 and 3. Then, nextly, we do need to set up the buffer gate, which is controlling the delay from the signal counter and to a value that is, again, larger than it's the time it takes for the signal counter to reach its set value which in my case is 30 seconds, which is plenty. And lastly, the buffer gate, which is responsible for when the doors under the space scanner are going to start, which value has to be around 49 seconds, exactly the time it takes for the bunker gate to open. But please do mind that it takes the bunker door roughly 49 seconds to open when it has power. When you have a power outage, they need to come up with a backup plan. One final thing that I would like to mention before I show you the space scanners in action is that you do have to avoid using heavy infrastructure around the space scanner. This also includes solar panels. Make sure you don't have them here on this level or this level. And if you do like to use solar panels, make sure that they're down here at least so that you do not interfere with the signal of the space scanner. Okay, with that said, now let's demonstrate. Okay, we're back and now you see that both space scanners have detected incoming objects. The right space scanner was in this case quicker than the left one. Do you notice that the scan quality is right now because the door is closed 1 to 200 seconds before they arrive? And now let's see how the whole system holds up. Okay, now the meteor shower has passed and as you can see we have taken some meteor damage. And this includes the two kill switches that I have and a bit of the sidewall of the first scanner. Of course in the real gameplay you are going to have this signal switch somewhere buried inside your base so that it is not going to get hit. And here we reach one of the drawbacks of the design that I'm showing you. It is not perfect and as you can see, Regolith is going to collect on this entrance here so that when you come with a duplicate to dig everything here out, you're gonna have to dig out this too. But other than that, you are good to go. Now I'm going to unpause and see how the set automation is going to handle the Regolith that has collected here and there. And it does work. And before I let you go, one last thing that I would like to mention is that the buffer gate that you can find in my very first version of the space scanner, which is responsible for when to open and close the bottom four doors, is not really necessary. And as you can see, I have gotten rid of it in the newer version.
Okay, and those are the space scanners that I use. If you do like this design, you can find the blueprints in the description below for the first and second version of the space scanners. Thanks for watching. Ciao, see you soon.